With movement and animating out of the way, let's set up a camera. I'm going to begin by dragging my player into the scene, and then I'm going to go ahead and attach a camera to them. I moved the camera back a little bit and tilted it just so it's looking down at the player. Now I'm going to make a new script and then call it camera controller and then open that script up. This is going to be a very quick script. I'm going to change mono behavior to network behavior because we're going to be using the callbacks just like in the previous videos. And then I'm going to delete the start and update and then type in override on start client. And I'm just going to do a quick check if I am the owner then I'm going to do camera cam equals get component camera and then I'm going to do cam dot enabled equals true. What this will do is when the client starts, if they are the owner of this object, then they will enable the camera. So going back to the project here, I need to go over to my camera, drag on the camera controller, and then I'm going to disable the camera to start. And I'm also going to select my prefab and then apply all. And now I'm going to remove it from the scene. I have two builds up as client and then I have the editor open as a server. And you can see now when I move around that the camera is indeed following the player because it is attached and that the camera is only active for the current player. I closed out of the build and I did notice a small issue. I was getting there are multiple audio listeners in the scene message. This is being caused by two reasons. The first being I have a main camera in the scene and it has an audio listener attached. So I'm just going to delete that from my scene real quick. The second being is that only the camera is disabled and we enable it if you are the owner, but there is also the audio listener which is still enabled. So that's going to be a problem and also cause the same message. So what I'm going to do instead of disabling the camera component is I will enable it and then and just go ahead and disable the camera object itself. Then I'm going to go back to the code and change it from cam.enabled to game object set active true which will enable the entire object. So a real quick summary we just changed it from enabling the camera to enabling the object and I re-enabled the camera on the prefab and disable the object as a whole. I once again have two builds up both players can see their own character and their own camera is active and you can see that there are no more warnings or logs in here about multiple audio listeners. I have the prefab back up. Now let's assume that you don't want to attach the camera to the player and you'd rather have it out in your world following the player. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the camera object from my player prefab and then save the changes. I imagine most of you are going to be using a virtual camera so I went ahead and installed the package and I made a virtual camera with the following settings. If you want to follow along go ahead and do the same and set it up like this. Now I'm going to go back into the code and you can see I still have the camera controller script. We're going to change this up just a little bit. I'm going to keep the on start client and then add in some brackets here and then I'm going to do camera c equals camera dot main. So this is going to get the camera with the camera main tag on it. Now I need to assign the targets for the Cinemachine camera. So I'm going to do Cinemachine virtual camera and I have to do the using Cinemachine namespace. I'm just going to call it VC equals get component Cinemachine virtual camera. It's also worth noting that I couldn't get the Cinemachine virtual camera to come up. Not even the using was displaying. I had to close out of everything, delete my library folder, and then restart Unity. You might be able to get away with just deleting the CS project files as well. The fields I'm going to assign to are the follow and the look at fields. So let me go ahead and do that now, going back to my code. vc.follow equals transform and vc.lookat equals transform. And small mistake here, I don't want to get component on this object, I want to get the component on the camera main. So I'm just going to put C dot in front of that get component. Script is saved and now I'm going to go back to the editor. Head on over to my player prefab and then I'm going to drop that camera controller script right on top of the root because that's what I want to follow. I have two clients up and the editor as server once again. And you can see that the camera is indeed following the object so our code seems to be working just fine. I'm going to run through another camera scenario for you. Let's say you have multiple cameras in your scene or perhaps you don't want to use the main camera tag to find your camera. What we will do instead is track when the player object has spawned using the camera itself and then assign values when that event occurs. To begin I'm going to go to my scripts and then make a new one and I'm going to call it first object notifier. The goal of this script is to dispatch an event when the object spawned is the first object for the client or connection. This will run only on the client side. To begin, I'm going to delete the start and update and then make a public static event action 
I have to use using system and inside the brackets I'm going to use transform and I'm going to do on first object spawned. So this is going to be the name of our event right here. We're also going to need the network information to track if this is the first object. So I'm going to change model behavior to network behavior and then add using fishnet.object. And something you've already seen me use quite a lot in this series is override void on start client. I'll add a quick check if base dot is owner. So if I am the owner of this object, now I'm going to do network object knob equals base dot local connection dot first object. Local connection will return the connection for the client making this call. First object will return the first object spawn for the client. If the client has multiple objects and the first object is destroyed, it will default to the next already spawned object for the client. Now I'm just going to do a quick check if knob equals base dot network object basically saying if the first object is this object then we're going to invoke the on first object spawn event. Now we have a way to know whenever the object spawns for the client outside the object itself. That way scripts can access it and know when the client object spawns. Going back to the editor here I'm going to go to my player prefab and then add on that script that we just made, which again is called the first object notifier. And you'll notice that the camera controller script is still on the player object. Let's go ahead and remove it and then open that script up because we're going to modify it slightly. This script no longer depends on the network. So I'm going to change network behavior to mono behavior and then go ahead and get rid of this namespace. I'm going to have some errors here because this is from the network behavior. So I'm going to delete these bits, but I'm going to keep this momentarily. So I'm just going to comment it out. Now I'm going to make awake. So private void awake, and I'm going to do first object notifier dot on first object spawn plus equals and then press tab to automatically make the event. I added XML to the method and the event describing that it's called when the local client's first object spawns. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the code that I commented out here, drop it in that method, and then uncomment it. I don't actually need the camera anymore because I'm going to actually drop the script right on the camera. I do, however, need the rest of this code. And instead of calling the c.get component like it was before, I'm just going to get component on this object since it will be right on the camera and change transform to object, which is the one passed in from the event. Since we put the first object notifier on the root of the player, this is going to be the transform that's passed into the event. And that's the one the camera controller will get. Now let's go ahead and go back to the editor. I'm going to select the camera and then add the camera controller script to it. I once again have two builds up and the editor being the server. You can see I already started one and the camera is following it. Once I connect the second client, you'll see that the camera will lock onto it and follow it as well. And this is using our newest code.